electric. Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle for another monthly update on our energy generation and consumption. It's been a really good month in September, not necessarily on solar generation, but it's felt like a productive good month overall. There was some decent sunshine, there was some bad weather, it actually ended up cold at the end of the month. Uh, last year we didn't turn the heating on until mid-October, this year it was the end of September, so a little bit of a cold spell at the end of the month. But everything's rosy and bright here because I've got my new solar panels in the garden, so in total we've now got 11.6 kilowatts of solar panels. Now that sounds like a huge amount, 11.6, but of course we're limited by inverters, we don't really have that much power. Um, and then even with that inverter power, we're not getting as much generation through it. So we're peaking into the mid nines, nine kilowatts out of 11.6 panels. But also we've added some extra storage to our battery configuration. So our Pylon Tech batteries connected to our Victron inverter, that's now increased. We did have 17 kilowatt hours of storage. We've now got 32 kilowatt hours of storage. So I've almost doubled it. So it has felt brilliant. It's been a good month for getting used to having more solar power um, and more storage capacity as well. So I've been getting used to that. I've been playing with export and getting used to how much it goes up by during the day from solar because we just trickle feed on solar, we charge our batteries overnight from Octopus Intelligent Go and then just trickle feed it during the day. So it's been interesting to see what I can do with the state of charge and how I can keep it between um, 90 and 100% during the day and then how much I can discharge during the evening and how much was spare we've got left. So yeah, it's been a good positive month for me here. But actually, it's been one of the worst solar Septembers on my records. So let's start and have a look at the stats for solar energy. Okay, month of September, generation 893 kilowatt hours. How does that compare to yours? Did I beat you? Have you got even more? Yes, Trevor, you probably have, haven't you? Right, uh, 50 point... Oh, we've just had a power cut, according to Victron. Interesting. <laughs> There's an anomaly. So just while I'm recording, I had a notification appear up on the screen saying that uh, we've just had a power cut. That's how power cuts occur. But my television is still on. Susan's still cooking. Everything's uh, absolutely fine. OK, back to the numbers. So that's the peak there was 51, 52 kilowatt hours with three, six, seven, eight days above 40 kilowatt hours and a few under 10 kilowatt hours. So a mixed bag, some low generations. It was very, very cloudy and a lot of rain in September, but we did have some sunny days. The breakdown, 382 kilowatt hours for our 3.9 kilowatt array. That's with the Solus 3.6 kilowatt inverter. 146 kilowatt hours for our east facing gable and garage array. That's a 2.5 kilowatt Solus inverter. And our latest array, that's the garden array with six 405 watt panels. So it's just over 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. That generated 147 kilowatt hours, very, very close to our gable and garage panels. And it does seem that those two arrays, the garage and gable panels and the garden array are very, very similar in what they output. Those garden panels peaked at 9.6 kilowatt hours on the 14th of September. And finally, the other array, that's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, 2 kilowatts solar edge inverter, 218 kilowatt hours. A great comparison there, south facing, no shade at all, 218 kilowatt hours, 147 kilowatt hours for the same amount of panels, south facing, but I do get shade from trees in the afternoon. So yes, this September has been the worst September for solar generation that we've had. 382 kilowatt hours on our main array is lower than anything else. 218 on the solar edge array is lower than anything else. And 146 kilowatt hours on our gable and garage is lower than we've had in any other September as well. But add them all together and actually it's the best September we've ever had. Which you can see more clearly on this chart with me highlighting all the different Septembers. This September with the purple on the right hand side is definitely slightly higher than everything else. So it's a good job I keep installing more solar panels. So with this chart I'm looking at solar generation in a slightly different way. I'm not looking at kilowatt hours. I'm looking at kilowatts of so the instantaneous power. And for our entire system, all of the arrays together, the peak there is getting very close to 10 
kilowatts. So this month I'll show the breakdown as well, rather than just the peak power that we've got, I'll show you the maximum power that we're getting from each array. So this is the Solus 3.68 kilowatt inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels, and we're peaking at 3.6, nearly 3.7 kilowatts. Interesting peak here on the garden panels, we're peaking at 2.6, 2.7 kilowatts, but there's only 2.4 kilowatts of rated solar panels connected to it. So we're overperforming, brilliant news. Another array that seems to be overperforming, the three garage panels. It's three 370 watt panels, so it's just over 1100 watts is what it's rated at, but that's way over 1100 watts. That looks more like 12, 1300, doesn't it? So uh, yeah, another array that's performing very well on certain days in the right conditions. Onto the solar edge array, that's eight panels, 300 watts each, 2.4 kilowatts. And I think it's quite clear there that it's not bursting through that two kilowatt limit, is it? The uh, two kilowatt inverter is definitely holding me back. So if I had a different inverter there, I'd probably squeak another 100, 200, maybe even 300 more watts on those peak moments, on peak days. And lastly, our gable panels. They're facing east. There's four of them. They're 455 watts each. So that's 1.8 kilowatts of potential solar power. But they're directly 90 degrees on the wall on the gable. So we're nowhere near going to get the 1.8 kilowatts. Looks like we're peaking 1.4, 1.45 kilowatts. So what did we do with all that solar energy? This chart from Victron says we generated 911 kilowatt hours. We know better. We know it was 893. Directly, we used 152. We sent 53 to the battery. Now, I only trickle charged. So I'm quite surprised over a month. That's uh, 53 kilowatt hours. And 705 kilowatt hours of our solar generation, not battery power, went back to the grid. The My Energy app says we exported 824, so that's quite a lot more. And it says we imported 418 and self-consumed 187. So there's there's definitely some variances between the My Energy app and Victron. I've decided in these reviews to give you all of the data from all the different apps because not all of you will have Victron, not all of you will have My Energy. So by seeing the different numbers, you've got a better comparison for your systems. Just to finish off the My Energy charts, this is showing 49 kilowatt hours went into hot water, into our Mixergy hot water tank via the Eddy diverter. They're on time charges overnight using cheap rate energy from Octopus Energy. We're actually on the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff. And the Zappi, exactly the same, uh, same tariff, same use overnight, 116.5 kilowatt hours. And the house load, 440.4 kilowatt hours. The thing that's noticeable there is the 116 kilowatt hours on the Zappi. That's much lower than normal. We've done a lot less miles in the two electric cars this month. Talking of hot water, this is our hot water tank and how full we have it. On two occasions, we've done a cleanse this month and I've heated it all the way up to 100%. So we have a full tank of hot water. Most of the time, we have under 20% of hot water, but it's always at the right temperature. This chart is from Mixergy data again. It's showing the cold water and hot water temperature. So these aren't the input temperatures or the output temperatures. The Mixergy tank has two baffled tank sections to it, one containing the colder water and one containing the hot water. So we're always heating the hot water section and then it expands into the cold water section as you heat a greater percent of hot water. What's interesting from this chart is, yes, you can see we're mostly got over 50 degree hot water, which is what we want, peaking about 54 degrees. And it's coming down overnight to around 40 degrees. So it's never going lower than that, even when the tank is absolutely empty. What's noticeable, though, is the bottom chart, though. Yes, you can see the spikes with the cold water section gets as hot as the hot water temperature. They're the cleansers when the whole tank is full. Obviously, the cold section is exactly the same as the hot section. But on the right hand side, it's starting to dip down. It is getting colder. The groundwater temperature is getting colder. So it's going to take more kilowatt hours to heat our hot water, isn't it? Getting close to the end of the video now. So consumption of individual devices. The Zappi is at the top with 113 kilowatt hours, followed by the kitchen sockets, 61 kilowatt hours. It's very interesting to see how much energy we use in the kitchen for cooking. Uh, Eddie from the grid was 49 kilowatt hours. 
the Toshiba air conditioning. So that's partly heating and partly air conditioning, 44 kilowatt hours, which is quite low. TV, 19 kilowatt hours. The Eddy from Solar, 19 kilowatt hours. That's included within the figure above. The main induction hub was another 14 kilowatt hours. And then the internet hub, which is also the My Energy hub and the Home Assistant hub, that was at 11 kilowatt hours. And because we've started to do heating type things, which includes dehumidifying, we had the dehumidifier on for four and a half kilowatt hours. The Mixergy electric heat energy. I actually used the Mixergy devices to heat hot water as well. Four kilowatt hours. And lastly, the Yuka mower, our robot mower, 1.8 kilowatt hours. And the individual heaters listed below, I haven't been using them this month, but in October, yep, I'm going to be expecting a bathroom, an ensuite, etc. I'm expecting some energy usage for heating in all those other rooms. Saving the best for last are energy costs. So far in 2024, we have consumed 4.8 megawatt hours from the grid at a total cost of £474, including standing charges. Compared to the export of 6.4 megawatt hours for an export credit of £961. So we're doing quite well. We are well in credit. So year to date, we're about £487 in credit. This chart intrigues me, though. This is a plot of the daily energy costs. So the costs that we have with Octopus Energy for energy we are either importing from the grid and paying for or energy we are exporting to the grid and being paid for. So in the start of the year, January, February, March time over on the left hand side, most of the numbers are above the line. We have a bill. We're paying Octopus Energy money. And then around March the 14th, it all changes and we start to export a lot more of our energy and get paid a credit instead. So most of the days from March the 14th onwards, we're in credit. So this is very interesting. It's roughly 90 days so far this year we've paid out money to Octopus Energy and 197 days so far this year we've been paid a credit. Now, at some point in October or November, that will change again and we'll have less solar energy. We won't be exporting as much and we'll start paying Octopus Energy again. At the end of the year, hopefully we'll still be in a credit situation. So far, it's looking like we will be. This month's energy numbers, we exported 848 kilowatt hours that we've been paid for, £127.29. Versus our bill for importing energy from the grid, that was 385 kilowatt hours at a cost of £27.04. So, yep, that's another £100 credit into the kitty, ready to pay our winter bills. So back last year, I did a video, didn't I, talking about moving away from fit deemed export onto an export tariff. And was it worth it? And would I make more money? And I estimated a £500 saving by moving to the export tariff that pays me 15 pence a kilowatt hour. It's looking to be spot on, that estimation. So lastly, a couple of uh, points on temperatures in the house and outside. These are our temperature sensors. We're using Sonoff and Akara Zigbee uh, battery-powered temperature sensors, and they connect to a Sonoff USB Zigbee what is it, hub? And that connects into Home Assistant. So that's how I monitor all of these different things. And we've got temperature sensors in every single room. The interesting one here is looking at the kitchen in red versus the lounge in blue. The kitchen is getting solar gain because we've got a lot of windows in there. So it's very interesting to see that we're getting more temperature, more heat in the kitchen. But now the sun's going to start disappearing. It's going to go the other way. And the kitchen's going to start to be colder, especially that we don't have a radiator in the kitchen anymore. So it's very interesting to see that the kitchen's warmer, but now we're going to have that cutoff date again at some point in October, and suddenly the kitchen's going to start to be colder. This one's also interesting. It's uh, in orange showing the outside temperature or a loft temperature, and then the lounge. So it's a very good indication about how stable we're keeping the temperatures. Apart from the very, very end of the month, and that's where we ran out of resistance to having it cold in the house and started turning the heating on. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed those statistics. And as always, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave me some comments. I'd love to know how you're getting on with your electric journey, whether that's electric cars, solar panels, battery storage, whether it's a DIY system, Tesla power walls. I would love to hear the different configurations from wherever you are in the world and how you're getting on with your energy. 
Are you managing to keep to anywhere near net zero? How low are your bills? What are your priorities? Just love all the mixture of um, information we get from people all over the world as to what your priorities are. But the, the general consensus that I've seen in all of the comments so far is everyone's liking solar and batteries. They're good for us, aren't they? Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more energy related videos. Bye for now.